Can you imagine actually being able to afford an S-Class Mercedes-Benz? Trouble is, you'd have to choose between it and the 7 Series BMW, Chris Eubank in a business suit. Or what about Jaguar? 50 grand buys you one of the new supercharged XJRs. It's rather like being in one of those expensive restaurants where you want everything on the menu. And then just when you think you've decided, the waiter comes over to tell you about the chef special, something that sounds even better. Well, I'm in today's chef special, the Audi A8, the wheeled equivalent of lobster thermidor. In a stroke, Audi has made the efforts of Mercedes, BMW and Jaguar look like suet pudding with custard made by Blue Circle. The A8 is one astonishing motor car. To look at, I'll grant you, it's like any other large saloon, but if you were Superman, rather than super couch potato, and you could see through paint, you'd change your mind a little bit. The body, the chassis, the whole damn shooting match is aluminium, which makes it as light, though not necessarily as fluffy, as shoe pastry. Dig a little deeper and you'll find it stuffed with the darkest, bitterest Swiss chocolate. The top model has a 4.2-litre V8 engine. Mm. Mm. Inside, it's as high-tech as they come, with plenty of toys to remind you that this car cost £46,000. And there are countless neat little touches, like double glazing. Then there's the gearbox. Treat it like an automatic or move it across here and you've got Formula One style changes down or up. You don't even need to lift your foot off the throttle. I have to say, this is the first German car that I've ever sat in which doesn't feel like a dentist's waiting room. It has charm and character, even though Audi has managed to make this huge piece of walnut look exactly like Fablon. Quite an achievement. But if you think it's impressive when it's stationary, wait till you get it on the move. The first thing you notice is the astonishing quietness. The only thing I can hear in here is the gurgling of my tummy after its agreeable lunch. This car is as quiet as a church mouse in bedroom slippers. It's almost eerie. Audi has recognised that most people in the market for a car like this want comfort above all else. You could drive the A8 across a field of corrugated iron and not know. As a long-distance cruiser, then, this car is right up there with the very best. And you don't even need to stop for fuel very often, because it's so light you'll get 25 mpg, maybe more. So, it's as good as a Jaguar at being quiet. It's as good as a Mercedes at being well-made and well-thought-out. That only leaves BMW. To put it mildly, BMW's monopoly on big luxury limos that drive like sports cars has been shattered. First by the supercharged Jag, and now by this. Pull the Tiptronic gearbox over here, drop a cog, floor the throttle and... Oh! Again, that lightweight body pays dividends. Top speed is 155 miles an hour, and the Reckless can get it from 0 to 60 in seven seconds. My only real criticism of the A8 as a performance car is this seat. It just doesn't hold you in place properly when you're going around the corners. And boy, can it corner. But if the four-wheel drive system isn't enough, the whole car is awash with novel safety features. As I see it, there's only one real problem with the A8. 
image. Buying a car in this sector of the market is all about making a statement. I have a Mercedes-Benz. I like to push the working classes off the road. I have a BMW. Secretly, under this jacket, I'm wearing red braces. I have a Jaguar. I'm a pillar of the establishment, a Freemason, chairman of the local golf club, a magistrate. But what about, I have an Audi? What does that say about you? Ah, I have an Audi... <sighs> no. I have an Audi, Princess Diana has an Audi, so... So what? If you buy a car like this, you're not really making a statement at all. Perhaps that's a good thing. <laughs>